and the game has begun so let me just get that there I've just got mm. the live board in front of us I'll make it a bit bigger I'm not too worried about this sub in goal okay so Danny we are underway and it's d4 and I think d5 on the board from looking at the live feed there we go the, the moves are coming in so Simon's obviously white he's yeah, sat down yeah. shaking his opponent's hand and we have a Queen's Gambit so Danny you're a bit of an expert in this line obviously uh, what in the Queen's Gambit yeah I think so aren't you well I watched the TV show <laughs> <laughs> that's about it I personally didn't like it. I, I know everyone raved about uh, the Queen's Gambit TV show, but I wasn't really a fan. I don't, I don't know what you thought, Blair. I haven't seen it. Would you believe? I've always I considered it to be something of a busman's holiday, and so like I do watch. I sort of watch. I watch enough chess. I, even watch, I watch you when you're live on your streams, Danny, as opposed to like the Queen's Gambit. So, well, I mean, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's probably better. Yeah, I end up watching too much now. I find that now, actually, if I'm watching a TV show. Um, it's very, it's very easy. Like the internet is so addictive, right? And and playing blitz and stuff. You're not, you're in the middle of a TV show. By the way, just very quick, I think he's going to take on D5, and he did. I was going to say, so I had to get that in there. Just he was making the move. I think he was going to play the exchange Slav. Right, right. I just wanted to get my prediction in there. That was going to be my prediction for today's opening, actually, an exchange Slav. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to... No, don't play the exchange slab. So he's already cool. played it, Danny. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I think... But do you not think it's a slightly underrated opening in the sense that, you know, he's actually not going to do any sacrificing this time. He's just going to try... But that's and... what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, this is the point I was trying to make, that he's actually a very good technical player, Simon, which I think he realises himself. But he tends... Like, if I said this to him, look, you score badly when you sacrifice, I don't think he would really care. He might you know, be more likely to sacrifice more, Daddy, just to sort of try and prove you wrong almost. It's like, come on, bring it on, you know? And, yeah, try and annoy me, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. I, I think some people would like... I mean, it's interesting when you talk about the statistical side of chess because I, I do think that chess players aren't that interested in statistics in general. And, um, yeah, he's playing someone from Ukraine called Anastasia. I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Rachman... Ulova is not a player I'm familiar with. So he was born in 1994. So that means he's 29 years of age or 20 or 28, depending on her birthday. And uh, yeah, I don't know much about her. It's got a reasonable rating. She's 22.66. Obviously a good player. I think I looked her up last night. I think her peak rating was 23.01. So she's not that far off her peak rating. And obviously you said, I think you've mentioned to me certainly that you feel that there's some downward pressure on on ratings, or it's hard to maintain your rating. Is there any reason you think that's the case, or is that something you do actually agree with? Oh no, absolutely. I mean, you know, Keith Arkell, good friend of ours, has uh, often made this point that there's been deflation. He was saying this years ago, and I was saying, "What are you talking about, Keith? You're just saying that because our ratings are going down." <laughs> and kind of excuses for the fact that we're getting old and rubbish. But there is some truth in that. I mean, you know, I play like two thousand rated players now. 20 years ago um you would have uh, you would just beaten them easily but now they take points off you and there's so many juniors and i think this is proven even someone like ken reagan who's into his statistics and doesn't you know come up with statements willy-nilly he basically said there is there is a genuine thing called a pandemic lag where uh, all these juniors who didn't play during the pandemic are at least say 200 points underrated and that is causing an effect in the rating system you see now in the English rating system, the top rated English player is now 2676, David Howe. You know, we used to have uh, Mickey Adams was over 2700, even David Howe's been over 2700, you know. So that's the highest rated player is now 2676. So everybody's going down. You know, I'm going down, like every tournament you play, I'm going down, you know, I'm pretty much, I can't even remember the last time I gained rating points in a tournament. So it's like, yeah, it's very, very tough. Daddy, I, have, Daddy, I have to get your opinion, sorry, on the move that's just been played on the board, because I know that Simon's talked about this, and I think this is actually a speciality of the guy, Zibit, Ingvar, who's, who's who happily has given us the board feed pictures. He's one of the yeah. key organisers out there. What do you think about this move, Daddy? That's a very, well, the, my initial reaction is why not, I mean, the most natural response to F3, clearly going to go E4. So bishop f5 i'm guessing queen b3 might be a problem 
but let me get these moves out on the board for you. So you're thinking that obviously let's just go back and go through it. So White's plan yeah. obviously of F3, as you're saying, is to go E4 and immediately stake a massive at stake in the centre. Sorry to repeat my word Quite possibly, there. yeah, yeah. I mean, otherwise why go F3 at all? Uh, but Bishop F5 could be met either by G4 or, uh, or or Queen B3. And knowing Simon, he would probably have E4 on his agenda because he's, he, he does play like these Black Mardima Gambit kind of things, right? Absolutely. I think he, I think I'm not quite sure. I can't remember the exact line, but he told me there's some very tricky line, and I think it probably involves a pawn sacrifice, no doubt. So, quite on topic. If Simon does play a move like, I mean, like a move here, like e4, for example, maybe a quick bishop c4, queen b3. I guess is maybe one of the options. Is it? Well, Simon knows a lot of theory. I mean, he's uh, he does know. I mean, I, I'm, my theory is pretty bad. So if you can combine my talent with Simon's opening knowledge, you'd have a seriously good player. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm only kidding. But as I say, I can't quite, it's a shame on me. I can't quite remember, but I know that a, couple, a month or two ago, as I say, Simon was talking about this exact line, that it's quite tricky. Okay. And I think I've, the never seen, I've never seen it before. Honestly, I've, I've seen the exchange slide many, many times. I've never seen the move F3 there. Yeah, I was very surprised when he told me about it because I some, often play the sort of black side of it and I don't recall ever meeting this yeah. in any sort of game almost at all, even on the internet where, you know, you're much more likely to no, meet no, no, a whole variety yeah. of stuff. It is a risky move, I think, because there are scenarios you can imagine where black goes knight c6, very quickly breaks in the centre. Yeah, I think Blue um, Quar was mentioning this in the chat, like knight c6 might be his preferred option straight away. I wonder if one of the advantages this though, I'd be very surprised. I don't think Simon's probably got any games with F3 in the database at all. No, no. And unless no. you dived into his like, you know, leak leak chess.com account where he might never play this as well, keep it hidden. She's probably gonna be on her own at this moment. And and that's got something to be said for it, hasn't it? Provided it's not ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, but I'm wondering what the movie is after night C six. Uh, do you go bishop f4 or I mean I'm, I'm struggling to see the next move for white well I'm thinking really... I'm thinking maybe you could can you play e4 let's just go through this yeah and, you probably and with the idea of like it. d5 I mean it seems pretty con yeah, otherwise no. it seems completely inconsistent if you start playing no, that's right yeah absolutely yeah takes and then d5 that must be the idea uh, and and uh and then the knight gets kicked around so I don't know how much that is relevant but this is kind of so I was very good in messy positions and if he's prepared it as well like if I'm playing black here and I'll see this so I imagine that this sequence might happen I'd be very worried playing Simon because I know how dangerous attacking player that he is so I'll be very concerned you know I'm, my knight's getting kicked around I don't know how much of this is preparation Danny I can assure you that I don't know I mean one of the I was thinking his opponent does actually play quite a lot of different systems with black including like the Slav right. G6 E6 the, the Benko yeah. I mean she kind of does play a lot of different stuff but I know so I'm not saying Simon prepared this line specifically for today but if I sure. if you'd asked me what was going to happen on the board my best guess would have been a Slav defense and I think Simon even if he hasn't specifically prepared this line for today I know that he's had this line on his mind for a, a long time you know yeah i mean that's the thing i mean that's you know what you said is actually very true you know like if, if you play too many openings then uh, there is a danger that you know you you can you can basically not have a broad enough knowledge of that particular opening and, and somebody surprises you with this move f3 well you might not you know i would i mean i've played the slav occasionally myself i generally feel very um uncomfortable when people play um exchange stuff because it's very very hard to win you know like if you were playing like magnus carlson it was probably best chance of getting a draw against a supercomputer would be white in the exchange slot right but not playing the move f3 yeah of course yeah i think that's fair by the way dad i don't know if you can see the stream but um uh, uh, again rachman gulova i mean i hope that's a fair pronunciation if it's wrong of course we always yeah, apologize yeah, yeah. but she has got her head in her hands straight away this is clearly unless she's sandbagging or bluffing this is clearly a very a big surprise to her this sort of no F3 no i mean move. i feel very uncomfortable i mean i think if you don't know this a uh, move uh it's clearly uh you know you, when you play the slav you're expecting just to you know that's the thing about the slav a lot of slav players are automatic players they they can bang out all these moves like bishop f5 e6 you know they can bang out the first 15 or 16 moves 
they're not used to actually people like to play the Grunfeld and King's Indian and stuff that can often go off off the beaten track very quickly but uh, in the Slav you expect you to be able to bang out the first 15 or 16 moves without any issues and when somebody springs a move like F3 you're like what the hell is this I mean, I, I reckon Danish is going to think, I mean, can we have a little side side wager? Not like a bit of like sportsman's bet. I think she's going to think for at least 15 minutes here. Yeah, I do. I really do. You know, I, I, uh, um, yeah, maybe 10 minutes. I mean, but it's very hard to say. I mean, she might. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at her body language, <coughs> I don't think she's going to move within the next two or three minutes, put it that way. I think she's going to have uh she doesn't look that confident normally when people start thinking and they look confident they might they might be in the tank but then they're ready to move very quickly but she doesn't look that very confident so i'd probably agree with you maybe 15 is a slight exaggeration but um yeah we'll see no idea really i mean i think from a psychological point of view you know she's sitting down she's deciding which one of her systems many systems she plays she's played like you know um, grinfeld king's indian type positions as i say she's played benko she really does play a lot of systems as with black against d4 and i guess her choice of playing the slav maybe she was expecting a potentially an exchange slav but i don't think she wanted to have such a decision after move you know on her fifth move no, it's already a very important decision, like you say. I mean, you could go, for example, knight c6, e4, and then just say, look, I don't want to uh, go into this wild form sat line, so I'm going to go just e6. I mean, it's, it, it can't be that bad for black. Um, but then e5, I guess, or not necessarily e5, maybe bishop e3, because now taking on e4 is, is more of a serious threat. Bishop b5 is also a move. Uh, go back to this position here, maybe bishop b5 developing, pinning the knight. Yeah, and then just go no, very quick development, knight e2. Uh, Simon would like this position. He's quite good with like mobile centre. Um, he played this position well, I think. So, but you know, you're not losing this black. So you could you could play this and, and just see what happens. Let me ask you, I mean, I've, you were saying, of course, it's slightly different. I mean, the, the concepts of understanding of is how, how, you, how would you feel about this is maybe yeah. different to how she would feel about this, of course. And it's obviously most important to how, what her mindset is in terms of like, you know, will, you know, she might, she might be surprised by this. It looks like she genuinely is. Do yeah, you know, yeah. how, how fearful is she? How fearful would you be, Danny, of, of this position? If you, if you, if I put you immediately in this position, whether, whether you liked it or not, after F3? especially playing Simon. I mean, you've already alluded to some of your feelings. I'd be very, very, very nervous. Yeah, I'd, I'd already, I'd already start to think I'm, I'm going to lose this game, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really seem to be any obvious move other than knight c6. I mean, I can't. What do you I think mean, the maybe... issue is with Bishop f5? You just think that that's kind of like maybe asking for it a little bit. The pawn on b7 might be a bit, it's not bit that soft. bad, but, but maybe g4. G4, well, how do you respond after g4? Well, I guess you'd have to. I mean, I assume to be consistent. Bishop g6. And then h4. Is there a, like, a little bit of a danger your bishop might get trapped? And then we go h5. I'm going to go g5. And where do you put the knight? Because if you go back to d7, then d5 might be hanging. Yeah, so this is a, and also, I guess that this is, I suspect it's the sort of move that you, it, whether it's a good move or not, and I'm not quite sure, but you probably certainly wouldn't want to play it if you're unprepared because you can certainly see a lot of dangers. I mean, it's not it's true, it's true that after knight d5, probably black has some play for the pawn because you, you created a lot of weaknesses on the king's side. And maybe, but I don't know. I mean, again, you're speculating as black, you, you don't know for certain. And uh, you could just be a pawn down and. Yeah, I mean, objectively, it's probably just good for white. So, no, uh, uh, bishop e3, or, or bishop a3, probably. Or bishop a3, I'll try bishop a3. Because if you take my, bishop a3, uh, and if you take my idea is, is to uh, take on c6. Can I castle here, just because you don't have, like, the... the... But, but then I take and take on b7, right? Oh, of course, sorry. So you're, I'm sorry, completely. You're threatening, sorry. You're just threatening to win material by... By, by picking up the bishop on c5 yeah. so and, and, the, and the point is if you if you take everything on go king f8 i have knight g5 and if so, queen so you're saying so, 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 please, takes 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 king f8 ah beautiful knight g5 the queen again we had this yesterday of course the queen would love to take the knight but it's obviously one of its key jobs is protecting its own rook on a8 
I suppose yeah, you can yeah. only protect your own pieces. You would protect someone else's and chess. But maybe you could play King E7, but it looks unbelievably scary. But it's still knight G5 even there, you know. So King E7, yeah. This, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, the rook potentially is, coming. Maybe would be one is also coming in at some point. You coming know? in at some stage as well. So she's, she's so, deep in thought here, and understandably deep in thought here, because her next move seems she might. I mean, it might be already, as we say, the computer. We, we, let's ignore computers because neither of these people are using computers, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's already a very committal decision. We go back to live board. Yeah, it's, it's very. I mean, I appreciate it, but you know, the computer's telling us it's already gone. But yeah. from a human point of view, what she does here is kind of like really critical to how hard it's going to be for Simon to damage because Simon's still going to win this game. It, it might be yeah, I mean, that's and she team, played man. and she has indeed played H6, I believe. Yeah, there it goes. Wow. Wow, that that's that's oh H6. Yeah, H6. Wow. That's Yeah. Okay. It it looks too slow, but mm um it's it's not stupid because well, it took yeah, a 20 you... it took a 20 sorry to daddy forgive me it took a 23 minutes to come up with this fantastically aggressive h6 <laughs> so i'm being a bit unfair i just like to no i mean uh okay so the candidate moves here for why i think are uh, king h1 everyone's shouting bishop a3 at the rooftops by the way sorry, bishop sorry. a3 I, I would definitely i appreciate you coming around to that but please go to daddy just no, no. i'll let you speak obviously talk about your concept of these candid moves and why you would look at them for red i appreciate you're just about to do that but i mean one reason i look at king h1 is because um i don't allow taking on d4 with check right so i've removed that possibility Bishop a3 I would look at because it cuts the king off. I mean, Bishop a3 is by far the most natural move. I'm, I'm sure that he'll probably play that, but um, absolutely Bishop a3. I would probably play that myself, you know. I mean, why not? Okay, so like the response is, it's a very interesting point you made there. So we both consider, or we, especially we've had the heads up with the evaluation, but we both consider white's position very strong. Now, black's played a fairly slow move. You could take the opportunity of playing king h1 and then all our plans still exist. We don't ever have to worry about any type of capture on d4 with check. So it you know it gives us a free reign. We don't have to respond to that. Sure. So you're thinking immediately drawn to bishop a3, just punt shouting it out. You knight e7 is the is is Arsenal fan Richie's response to this potentially. No, I mean that that's definitely a, you know a good move. Uh, I'm just wondering if if white could go queen. How do you respond to queen? Oh, queen b3 have knight d5 maybe because i think queen b3 bishop a5 there's bishop uh there's bishop takes e7 and you can't take with a queen because of queen b5 check and if you take with a king i go queen a3 king e8 bishop b5 check and if you go bishop d7 i take on d7 sorry daddy can i just get those moves on the board do you mind yeah 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 oh, can you tell me them sorry forgive me so queen b3 attacking <laughs> the bishop on c3 yeah so but 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 then you can respond with knight d5 but if you go bishop a5 i go bishop takes yeah i go bishop takes e7 and you can't take with the with the queen because of queen b5 check or queen a4 i guess as well yeah. so thing. you know when i'm calculating i'm always looking at four two moves you know four two moves captures i think very important so king takes I now go queen a3 check and i think you're in trouble maybe because if you go king e8 i'm winning on this. maybe you can go king d7 but it looks well, that looks horrible but i mean i'm not saying anything that's particularly good here but what you're so, thinking about here how about you b5 check? well is this quite strong here well i'm sure yeah queen yeah i'm six. sure yeah you're gonna say i agree with you it's kind of like yeah everything looks strong it's just a question of what's strongest to a degree yeah. but yeah 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 i mean it's, it looks terrible for black but um yeah i mean also rook c1 is possible you know yeah just Oops. keeping the king in the keeping the king in the maybe even knight g5 here and try and take on f7 you know? yeah this seems to be an embarrassment of like embarrassment of riches let's just put that exactly. concept on the board exactly. try and take on f7 you know king ea maybe it's better to take with the queen rather than take with the pawn but i don't know uh king e8 and then something like bishop g mind you there is a queen d4 here again that also goes to show sorry queen d4 so again it goes to show why 
you know, I know you can't combine all these ideas at once, the h5 very open, but why queen d4 it, with a check is always just a little bit annoying. If we could, you know, magic this position with our king on h1, then black would never have any possibility of the resource such as queen takes d4 check. Yeah, yeah. But let's, so let's go back. So after h6, bishop a3 is definitely springing to your, to your mind. But king h1, I mean, I don't know what's best, but king h1, okay, the, I guess the issue with king h1 is it can black then castle that you know is that is that is the worst over for black yeah yeah situation. yeah but you still you still have a uh, queen e2 possibility with a threat of uh, but it's true that yeah i mean you kind of lost some impetus right maybe black can play queen d5 even you know it still feels very bad we might, we might, have, rook, we might have rook b5 ideas against that yeah 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 queen e4 uh I mean, can you take on d4 with your idea queen no queen e4 knight f5 g4 right so you're saying takes queen coming to e4 threatening mate knight tries to block on f5 and white simply or fairly simply puts the ball on g4 threatening to win material the knight clearly can't move because of queen to h7 check and mate as they say but i think it, even so this can all be avoided and there doesn't there doesn't appear to me to be any particular downside to playing mm -hmm. bishop a3 immediately unless i'm missing something because black could if black had wanted to they could have taken on d4 in the previous position without the without mm -hmm. these two moves on the board so what was after bishop a3 knight takes d4 now can you get away with that knight takes well can't i just go um oh i see what you're saying i was going to say knight takes and then bishop b5 check but it doesn't quite looks very dangerous but it doesn't quite I can take with the queen I could take the queen as well of course really really scary though it looks really really scary but, but then just king h1 it feels very bad for black because of because of all the like threats like queen f3 and yeah just in general you know like how do you evaluate material you evaluate I mean material is just really existing you know as as material but ultimately obviously in chess it's about check make the king so you know, you could say, well, uh, what a black support up or whatever, but it's not really going to help her if she gets checkmated. Mm. It's kind of only massive if she survives to the end game and then it's like winning for her. But unfortunately, as they say, before the end game, God placed the middle game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, even a move like 92 might be possible here, which looks ridiculous. But 92 with a, with a threat of 94 to D6 could be very strong. Yeah, I mean, if the knight ever lands on D6, it's pretty much game over, isn't it? It's a couple of moves away, but. Well, also, it's, quite, it's really quite hard to see what it's almost you get the feeling that if black ever got a move like bishop d7 in it kind of almost gets in the way of defending their other pieces as well so it kind of improves matters by a little bit of development yeah, yeah. but it doesn't because you know, it doesn't... the actually the rook on b1 is doing a very good job here because you wanted to play that b6 move to nullify the problem is there were pieces hanging so there was a problem with every move that black could play and so there is a problem i'm guessing with with a6 because otherwise you know why would the computer say that why it was weird just check it's here there's a simon no simon hasn't played so we'll just go back we're contemplating bishop a3 here bishop takes d4 is that right <laughs> lost my place after one yeah move. yeah then king h1 maybe oh sorry we're more likely we're, we're sorry we're contemplating bishop a king, sorry we're contemplating bishop a3 maybe knight he's played bishop a3 yeah i think he's played he's it. definitely played bishop a3 oh has he definitely played that let me just check yes indeed thank you danny he has after eight minutes thought he has played bishop a3 Looks as, you the can, most logical move. as you can see the clock time's there so simon's just played his 14th move he has 52 minutes hopefully the clocks you can see live at the bottom board mm -hmm. Max mm. clock is ticking down 23 minutes just approaching 23 minute mark she's got a serious problem Sam, because you're going to have to play quite quickly over the next few moves anyway and she's under serious pressure in the position very scary position for black um i mean the good thing is if she does lose quickly given that there's an afternoon game you know you i mean i don't know what time the afternoon game is i think but... it's at like i think it's at four o'clock local time and what time is it now in Iceland? They're now behind us. It's 11 o'clock. So it's 9 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So at the currently know. it's 11 o'clock. We're, we're kind of two hours, we're two hours into this game. I presume all the players are staying in the hotel. So when you finish your game, you could presumably go back to a hotel and 
Not, I'm, I'm not 100%. I know Reckwick's probably not a massive place. I imagine it's within yeah. some sort of easy, very easy walking distance or a quick, you know, jump in a taxi five, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I imagine, yeah, it's, I imagine it's just walking distance away, I think. So, so if you did finish the game, I mean, quickly, obviously you don't want to resign here. You want to play it out, but... You'd rather I, go down fighting almost, is that your point? Rather than just like, you know, go down, you know, end up being a sort of piece for a Paul no, my, two my, down. My, 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 yeah, but my, no, my, I think my point was, it, it, uh, really, no, not really. My point was really, maybe it's, it's not such a bad thing if she loses quickly from her perspective, because then she gets to rest. Also, she's had the black piece against Simon. She's been caught in the opening. You know, it's kind of like does happen from time to time, is it? Thank you to Charlie yeah. Cheska. It is Danny five minutes walk away. And the times of the rounds I gave are accurate. So, yeah. So, I mean, what's your feeling, Blair, on uh, two games a day? Because I'm actually quite a passionate believer in that chess tournaments should, should never be two games a day. Daddy, I'm not a big fan of one game a day, so. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, the point I would make is um, my normal boring analogies to other sports is that, say, for example, in tennis, you know, Wimbledon, obviously, I know that lots of money is like 50 million pounds in, in you know, Wimbledon uh, or whatever compared to chess. Uh, but, it, it, you know, if somebody said to, you know, Djokovic or, or Nadal or whatever, or, you know, Carlos Alcazar, whatever his name is, and they said, look, you're going to have to play all your seven matches back to back. You don't get a rest day. They'd probably tell you to sling your hook. Yeah. Yes, in chess, we accept it. My, I guess the point is, I, my only visual reaction to you would be about a tournament like nice and I appreciate there's logistics and organising it, they've got to rent the venue, etc. But my immediate gut reaction would be if you're going to get everyone flying in for seven days, why not just make it nine days? I mean, is it really that own? Are we, are we really saying that? We can't do one round a day for nine days. We'd have to get it within a week. Are we really saying that? I think it's partly based around how much holiday t time people can get, the way they organise, and partly to reduce costs. I mean, I appreciate it reduces costs for the venue. I appreciate it reduces costs for people travelling. I mean, Iceland, you know, the hotels there, if you're not getting sort of grand master conditions, then for, for, for the, your average person, you know, th those couple of extra days may make it prohibitively that much more expensive you've got the food costs you've got the extra hotel costs etc yeah. you know so i guess it, it does seem to me but I, I, I don't mind the schedule of this so much because it's it's two days where you get two two games which oh, doesn't seem this, that hard this can't be serious i moved by the way sorry to interrupt you danny this can't be serious surely not Oh, well, I mean, it does have some sense behind it because okay. like this should be forecoming right just to block that idea of of it may well be that Bishop A3 wasn't the best, you know. Oh, wow. Again, see, my initial reaction is probably completely wrong, you know. So maybe this uh, is I, mean, I, quite like, I quite like that move, actually. I'm okay. Like, oh, I like that. But it does have this idea of going Bishop B4, which is a serious move. So it, it might well be that Bishop A3 wasn't the best. And there was, there was maybe the computer pointed out a very clever way that White could, could win with, with some, something else. But but what what do you do against this bishop b4 move? No, that's actually a good point. I was just uh, the visual impression that a5 gave me was very negative. But obviously, once again, a cursory guards can be a, a completely bad idea, of course, in anything in life. But I think he shows he shows actually this is actually a good player because I, a5 didn't even appear on my radar, and mainly because he only a few moves ago so he'd gone a6. And I think this is another thing that I've noticed when you work with computers is that they always start from move one. So it's like you get to a position and partly it's your, you know, you, what you played before is, is playing on your yeah. mind. They don't have the emotional baggage exactly, Danny, so I think the yeah, point would but be they always, so, so they might, you might have played like a poor move like a few moves ago, or you might play the bishop to a square. So you're reluctant to move that bishop. But the computer always starts from move one. Exactly. So it doesn't have that baggage. So he just he just plays what he believes is the best, and this feels like it's almost like a computer move. It's like uh, I've gone a six, but I don't care. I need to meet Bishop a three, so I'm going like a five. It's a very clever move. So well, I don't think she ever played a six this year. First, I just point that out. But 
apparently okay what oh, about so you didn't go a6 no no a6 has never been played just to point that out. it did come oh, it did come sorry, directly it did come directly from a7 by the way i was getting confused because i thought she went h6 uh a yeah when i, 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 I said a6 was a6 when, when i said, when said h6 i thought she got a6 sure no she went she went h6 but yeah so but i take a point if the point i understand the context of your conversation i think people could come up with this had black already had a6 on the board it's yeah. quite sort of emotion inhibiting to then push that pawn again to a5 even if it's the right. best move it's kind of like you go oh, i've played this a6 i don't want to play a5 because i played a6 and i'm just not prepared to do it whereas computer would just simply look at the best move regardless of what's happened in the past it doesn't have that emotional connection to having you know if they put a piece on the wrong square they'll immediately put it on the right square a good yeah. example of this, Danny, is like apparently if you put again, it comes from Sadler's channel. If you put right. it in the Sicilian, if you put these on stock, if I just go back to start position because it's sort of something might appeal to you. If you put this on Stockfish, for example, there's the Sicilian opening, the open Sicilian, knight yeah. 6 knight c knight c3 a6. Say yeah. for example, a move such as I don't know, I'm just trying to give an example, um, like bishop e3. If you force it to play e6. And it goes f3 it will then immediately just play e5 wow because it absolutely hates for whatever reason it hates the structures the sort of cast problem that he used to love it yeah. hates these positions with the pawn on e6 it's only prepared to play them on e5 but it absolutely goes about what we're talking about if you force it to play e6 it will then play e5 straight away because it just won't tolerate the pawn being on e6 but a human player would basically never do that would they danny because they just obviously they'd play e5 straight away but if they had been forced to play e6 they'd kind of try and almost work around that and not be prepared to sort of go okay i've got to now go e5 but i always thought with the structures with the pawn e5 they're more solid than with the pawn at e6 so the computer probably thinks it's actually worse than that like the pawn e6 obviously a very double-edged dynamic way of playing but the computer thinks it's worse than that it actually is just a dubious way to play absolutely right danny uh, but um, but having said that, if you were white against it anywhere in e6, it would still destroy you. So oh, absolutely, of course. I'm not saying. By the way, I mean Kasparov loved these sort of e6 systems, didn't he? Oh, but I was just I was just trying to point out, you know, exactly building on your point about this sort of you know the connection of like you know you yeah, should play yeah, the best yeah. move regardless of what's regardless of what's happened exactly, in the past. Exactly, because there's always this kind of psychological baggage that you build up during the game so i'm now yeah. uh, but danny this has been a suggestion in the chat not mine so it's always nice to hear the suggestion in the chat yeah, i was considering that but then i was thinking bishop d7 yeah that was pointed out so let's just point out that the main reason behind queen a4 is to meet bishop b4 with capturing on b4 because yeah. the rook the pawn on a5 is now pinned the knight's pinned so obviously the capture of a6 we we'll just lose the rook on a8 so queen a4 designed to develop the queen pin the knight but perhaps specifically absolutely as simon williams talks ad, not quite ad nauseum on stream but quite a lot we you know think about you know push and and and, and defend against your oh, hang on, I've just seen like queen a4 bishop d7 rook d7 knight e5 rook takes d7 knight takes d7 bishop b5 and then if you go bishop b4 i have knight e5 ah uh, this is again that sort of position where we've got that we sort of the one we had sort of earlier but it's even more powerful here it's almost impossible to stop this move the king's cut from ever coming to safety 95 basically I think more moves play, Blair. I'm not okay sure. sure let me just get back to the board so uh queen a4 has been played wow right right i guess the impression so this sounds like an excellent suggestion in this uh, from the chat that was blue choir doesn't surprise me and simon looks like he's on absolutely massive form again danny he played yeah, yesterday that's like what I was earlier. that's what i was saying yeah. earlier i mean I, I, th I think he's actually got a if he can get through this game and get through today because it's obviously a tough game because you've got two two games a day especially black is going to be playing a, a almost certainly playing a you know a sort of 25 80 2600 by the looks of it i i think i think he could do some damage in this tournament and actually even win it you know but it, wow. it will be tough because you, you're playing i mean someone like ivan chuck you know you're black against ivan chuck or, or grandelius those guys are serious players yeah i know that he uh, these are sort of like it's understand by anyone particularly the black pieces would would like not struggle but it's a tough task i mean there's no doubt about that is it these players are so strong those guys mm. and stuff, you know Drunk. so um but you know it's not really about that it's not even about winning the tournament it's, it's about playing better yeah you know and he's a better player than i mean what's his rating he's 24 60s he's a better mm. player than that. yeah we know that now mind you i'm i'm even lower than that now i'm like 24 
30 yeah, but we both know that you're a much better player than that as well dan and if I'm you like sort of like played a lot over the board it would be it wouldn't take you long to get probably almost certainly back above 2500 well i do play quite a lot you know but my results aren't very good so maybe i was just age catching up with me uh i can still you know i can still do a lot of things in chess pretty well so i'm thinking of bishop d7 rook takes b7 knight d4 is that is that let's a, just go back again so you're thinking sorry forgive me yeah, so so bishop d7 now. And then after rook planning to bishop b4 by the way just to let people know. So breaking the pin on the breaking the pin on the knight on c6 also defending the rook on a8. Yeah. And then after rook takes b7 can I go knight d4 or is that is that just a bad idea? By the way, we should point I should I just want to point out briefly in this in this ephemeral moment the material is equal and white's yeah position is pretty good as well but you're saying maybe knight takes d4 yeah, yeah. Oh, i see clever because now if the rook was were to take the bishop on d7 there is no longer the devastating bishop b5 pinning the queen and winning it because the knight on d4 does the job of covering mm. the b5 square mm. and of course this opens up the attack on the queen on a4 very interesting suggestion danny but if, if i go let's say i carry that line on and i go um can I go Queen D1 anyway and just... I mean, Queen C4, I'm thinking Rook C8. Oh, Danny, stop press. Someone's been someone's been getting ahead of us. There is a computer line here. And again, challenge to you, sir. I'm taking this for granted. I haven't looked through it in my mind. This can't be... Oh, that this is this serious? Blue quite are you serious? Don't tell me. I was actually thinking there might be some weird stuff here, but I'm, I'm not sure. But um, don't tell me, right? I don't know. Maybe, uh, that's that right? I can't even. Oh my God! It is right as well. This is just classic. Wow. Oh no! Hang on! Hang on a minute. Is this something like knight d4, bishop a4, knight e6? Bloody hell, Daddy! You, you seen that? You seen that? No, no, no. I'm, uh, no, I'm, no, I'm just guessing. That's right. right. That's absolutely right. Probably that's just winning. Takes, mm. takes, and takes on e6 with the knight. Because you're draining mates all over the shop. And I was trying to make rook e7 work, but I, I rook f7. And also, is... just to point out as well, pawn takes runs into bishop g6, wow. mate. I'm sure you see this knight g7, wow. apparently. Wow, that would be. If that happens on the uh, board. If this happens on the board, he's getting searched, isn't he? Do you reckon? Do you reckon uh, they're just going to stand uh, him at the board yeah, and just pat him down? Think, not searched at all. I think it would just be like the, the, the game of the century. <laughs> Imagine no, if this. What an unbelievable. Thank you, yeah, Pluqua. I appreciate your and Pluqua obviously appreciate your honesty of saying that you looked it up. We all do like a bit of honesty. Don't mind you helping us out there because Sorry, we imagine. Yeah. Wow, let's just look at that one more time. That's incredible, Daddy, isn't it? So Rook takes B seven. The the kind yeah. of natural in inverse commas Knight takes D four, opening up the attack on the Queen. In, very importantly, also covering the B five square. As I said to stop, excuse me, the Bishop following up in this position. Just to point out. In the other lines, the bishop was coming into b5 with devastating effect. So knight takes d4 runs into the stunning, the remarkable knight takes d4. Bishop takes a4, knight takes e6, game over, apparently. Because if you, if you take on d3, I have rook e7, mate. And if you so let's just show that again. Wow, that's another beautiful... There's so many beautiful checkmates here, Danny, aren't there? Queen yeah. takes d3, rook e7 yeah, is mate. Sure. Is that a sort of epaulette mate type thing? That's without, normally the black has rooks on either side there, but here we've got the knight covering those squares. It shows how powerful just this whole concept of having the king cut in the center is really. Yeah. So and that's with... Arsenal pointing, Arsenal fan pointing out, there's a couple of mates here. So knight g seven's the threat, which would be if it was white, would that be mate? Mm -hmm. As I did say earlier, but thank you for reminding us, f takes e6 runs into bishop g6, check. Mate. I'll be honest with you, Simon's exactly the sort of player who's capable of finding this line. Do you think you might do you think you see this idea when he played Queen A4? I would say quite likely, yeah. Because because uh, more likely than not, because uh it's exactly the sort of thing that he wants to play over the board, right? It's not about just winning. We've already established this with Simon. If it's about winning, he's probably changed his style a long time ago. It's, it's actually about playing for the beauty of chess. I mean, if we go back to live position, as, as pointing out in the chat, Bishop G7 is such the natural move, you know, to, to block the yeah. pin, to, to, to set up the idea of Bishop B4, most importantly, I'd suggest. Right. And and to maybe meet, to maybe meet Rook B7 with the idea of Knight takes D4. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's one thing though, if it goes Bishop G7, I guess whether Simon's seen it or not, he may well have done or seen the idea. 
Yeah. If we take on b7, after knight d4, we wouldn't play rook takes b7. We might almost be forced to finding this, I guess. Is there any sort of sensible way out for white? Maybe there's sensible ways. You could maybe consider queen d1 or queen c4, but I don't look very good. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily want to... So queen c4 is being suggested, so you're quite right, Danny. That sounds like a, an idea. You wouldn't... Queen c4, you, know, you have rook, rook c8. This is a problem. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about in this... Okay, so in this position here... Are there other sensible so queen a4 is almost quite committed already isn't it because you obviously simon's obviously going to know that black can play bishop d7 it's the most natural reply so yeah, it yeah. almost feels like he's could he have seen this no, no of course I, he could have done I, I would be more surprised than not if he hasn't seen this really player. wow because he's, he's, these kind of lines that he's looking at he's a very creative player so you know he's, he's looking for ways to play 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 moves like this okay let me just look after this picture what's the material what's the material count here I was just we can't do oh, we can't do anything we just can't do anything like queen b6 I guess. Yeah, it's funny how you have no bailout move, is it? Because your queen is covering, you're covering your, your escape square to d8, but also is covering. Um, uh, I was going to say. Oh, it's covering the e7 square as well. So if we try to sort of like, as you pointed exactly, out, covering the e7 square. So, so we can't go queen c8 trying to make the gap for like to respond to knight takes g7 because. It has to be covering the e7 square as well. I would almost be disappointed if Simon hasn't seen this idea because it's exactly the sort of idea he should be seeing given that this is the style of chess, right? Um, I know it's a very beautiful idea, but it's like, yeah, he should that's... be seeing this. Could you go queen d7? Yeah, that's what's been, Danny, I don't you know, that's what's been pointed out as well. Sorry, let me just get the right position. So in this position, queen d7, obviously there's something, but what is it? Let's Let's work it out. Oh, oh no, I think you can just take on d7 crudely because if king takes, I have knight c5, takes a4, and I'm technically winning. Okay, yeah, because you've got two pieces. Yeah, I've got two pieces. Yeah, and if rook. you take with a bishop, then I have knight uh, c7, and then I'm winning the rook. Oh, right, you're winning the whole rook for free. So it might just be a case of cashing in. So let's look at the nat the, the better recapture, which is king takes d7. Daddy points yeah. out that we follow up with knight c5, forking the king, the bishop. Just say, for example, the king moves to c7. We've got knight takes bishop. The material count is black has sorry white has two minor pieces for a rook and some continuing pressure as well so well, but te technically um it's a winning end game isn't it because yeah the, the black king the black king is not safe here the, the minor pieces are very very strong uh so very yeah so like black doesn't even have time to do this for example because the rook just dives in and it's yeah like, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's a part yeah basically yeah I think if we could look at his picture, I think he's almost. Do you know what? I think he's sitting back and hoping she plays Bishop D seven. Oh, of course, of course. I think he's sitting back and thinking, "This is my moment on stream." Not well, he's had so many moments, hasn't he? But you know, he might be thinking again. He's writing another chapter in the brilliant history of like the Ginger GM. If this happens, well, this I think he's sitting back. Thinking, this is why you play chess yeah. because you wanna you wanna play beautiful moves like that. You know, and I mean, she has played Bishop D seven, by the way. Wow, so he's I'll actually sitting back. Yeah. I think he's sitting back thinking, if I go rip b7, how quickly am I going to play knight takes d4? Bishop d7 is on the board. And this I'm could, sure I thinking. think he's absolutely just. Oh, look at him. Is it his going? He's literally looking out the window. I think he's thinking about this beauty. I think he's got in his mind this could be his moment. To, well, he's had, as I say, he's had many moments, but this could be remarkable. Wow. But, but, what he, but the thing is. How likely is Black to play Knight D4? Because, but other, what other moves? What other moves do you play? It's like you know what after yeah. Rook, but takes B. Okay, well, hold on. What about Bishop? Can we play Bishop B4 here? Okay. But then Rook, rook takes. Uh, oh B4. God, yeah. Is this what? Just is this good? Oh, that's just fine. Right, then what? Just for, oh, is this how bad is this? Obviously, it's bad. It's yeah, it might not be that bad. bad. Like, like, but Queen takes. I have, I have. Bishop takes B4. This is the whole point. Oh, of course. Sorry, because because again, it's like. Yeah. And you have this idea again of this bishop coming into b5. Let's just put that on the board. Once the queen has moved off the back row, this pawn is once again pinned. So then the knight could try and capture, but it'd run into bishop b5, winning the queen. Clearly the knight can't drop back. And you still can't cast it. You can't even get out of dodge. So in this position, how bad is... I mean, of course, it does. Okay, this is just... Uh, well, we, we, we know it's like, bad by definition because we've been told it's bad, but... I've got moves like, like D5 even here. D5 and knight... D5, ED, knight, D4 looks very strong. And and also Bishop B5 was in the off thing. Bishop well, F5. Or maybe Bishop B5 is better because now... Sure, but, yeah. you got Queen B6 now, I suddenly noticed. So okay. Bishop B5's... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think... So, so what about Bishop B5, Queen B6? 
True. Yeah. True. So maybe it is. Maybe it is D five. It feels like. Well, it feels like there must be a win for White there. Oh, the, I mean, we think we know there's a win by definition of the evaluation, of course. But you know. What was wrong with D five? Sorry. Uh, go no, let's just go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, hold on, go so. back to your position. Uh, let me try D five again. Can I go E six now after you take? Can to I go take. E six check. Or well, Bishop F5 was also possible. Bishop F5, maybe. Maybe Bishop F5, Blair. Okay, Bishop F5, then King C7. Then Rook. Oh, that, no, aha, aha, aha. The yeah, Queen is now. now. now you, uh, so I can like, pile on with Knight D4 and Rook C1. And... Oh, yeah, apparently, apparently we're getting ideas. That the, the, all your ideas are pretty much. I appreciate your. You're just, you mm. haven't. If it, you were playing, you'd absolutely did do this concretely and definitively, but apparently all your ideas are correct, Danny. These are all looking. Apparently, yeah. it's the way forward. Yeah, yeah, good. I've still got it. Never uh, lost it. You know, don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Is that the idea? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but but yeah, these are the kind of positions I like to play as well. I'll be honest. Like, well, winning ones. Well, also, where it's concrete calculation, yeah, sure, winning, but where it's it's not a murky technical conversion. It's actually just concrete calculation, move by move variations. We've just been uh, joined, sorry, Dave. We've just been joined by Nikini in the chat, who says, first time chatter, damn, I didn't know Simon has Twitch." Oh right. Maybe oh. just now. well, two now exactly. We've come to the right place, but he's also thinking which one of us looks like the Ginger GM. Neither of us, you know. So, but we do have we do have just to let you know, Nikini. If we don't have people like Simon doing it himself, so to speak, we do have Grandmaster Daniel Gormali holding fort. And telling us the right moves finding some great ideas here so welcome thank you for joining us and we've just you join us at a, a, a propitious moment where the live position we're dying to see what's been pointed out rook takes b7 knight takes d4 and this absolutely stunning shot knight takes d4 sacrificing the queen but walking into this incredible knight takes e6 where white has the idea of knight takes g7 mate mm. in the offering is rookie seven mate and if pawn takes bishop to g6 is also a third and most beautifully different checkmate stunning to have three I, such I different checkmates example why it's so important not to cut your calculation off because a lot of players would, would probably look at uh knight d4 and dismiss knight takes d4 and they, they get as far as bishop, oh no but he takes the, the queen and they would stop right yeah so very very important just to keep your calculation going guys you like your variation going uh but i think this variation is very likely to appear on a board player because bishop what move does white have other than rook takes b7 i I, mean, yeah, I, I, I I daddy i do agree with you by the way just to shout out as we're joined by daddy this is one of the brilliant things that, and one of the ways that i've improved my chess recently and i'm you know, I, I don't play so much, but was, and I, I mean this for sincerity, was, was watching through Danny's course on Ginger GM. And he talked about, and one of the things I learned, one of the things I'm very bad at, relatively speaking, or relatively speaking, is calculation. And I do exactly what Danny just said there. I sort of got some good ideas, but I stop and I don't carry on. I don't calculate far enough. And so thank you, Danny. That was genuinely one of the things that I've, you know, considerate of in my games now. I don't, I sort of have some ideas and I, push them a little bit further, you know, try and calculate, challenge myself to calculate that a little bit deeper. Exactly. So maybe the critical line after Rook B7 is actually to take on E5, even though that other variation is very beautiful. And although to be fair, I'm, I'm even wondering if Bishop, just a very, you know, dull Bishop B5 is just very strong, actually. You don't even need to. Uh, you don't need to get into the depths of calculation. However, Rook takes D7 does look just crushing, doesn't it? It, it does and that, in fact after knight d7 i think even 95 might be even stronger but oh right as well we're coming in but oh, yeah because indeed then, because bishop b5 you might have f6 maybe or that's an excellent know. point danny no i appreciate you're just trying to survive you're not suggesting it's going to be no, great no, for black uh, f6 queen c4 so uh, sorry i did see something there no, maybe it was but anyway, let's go back. We yeah. can't just put in 95. Why not just do exactly what you said? No, and avoid this? I was thinking Rook B8 to try and sack back the exchange. That was what I was thinking. Okay, so but so 95 looks very... Yeah, 95 like, is yeah. crushing though because now you've got so many different threats like Knight F7 and, and Rook F7 and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, this is looking like termination, right? Uh, if you take on d4 and take on e5, um, oh, I have bishop b5 check, knight d7, queen takes g7, queen b6, king h1, queen b5, queen h8. So you say taking here? Yeah. But material already starts to look a bit dodged for black, isn't it? I mean, I appreciate you, you're looking at it correctly, you're looking at it deeper, looking at for the the full answer, not just like it, I do, it my cursory work. answer. It doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't yeah. Work. Because you're saying because you're saying takes knight e5. Yeah. The idea of queen e5, queen d3 probably still bad because of queen queen g7 anyway, right? Oh, Castles. You can, car you can car castle. Castles. Exactly point. Yeah, yeah. This is the sort of thing is easy to overlook because the black mm. kings in the center would be very easy to miss. You, 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 you stopped it casting for so many moves. You almost feel like it's been displaced, but still, it's completely legal to cast a queen side. It may also, not. So black has that after after instead of instead of a queen uh, instead of um, queen takes e five. If you go bishop b five check knight d seven, and then queen g seven, I have queen b six and castles there as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So I still have some, you know. Yeah, you've got some ways, some some ways to get out of dodge. You know, it will look, even yeah. this position looks very scary. I mean, like Queen yeah. C three and Rook B one, right? Probably just winning. Sure. Probably just winning because because of this all these different threats. Maybe not this idea. Yeah, absolutely. It's, but uh, the Black King, you know, again, it's going to struggle to survive. However, the, these are very important things to note because you really don't want the stress of having Black sort of potentially running away. You really just want to kill it or checkmate it or win substantial mm. material where mm. it stands. Absolutely. But you were saying as well, there's a reason why this doesn't work, particularly because because done. But this line you just looked at there, bishop b5. This looks very strong. There, bishop b5, knight here. Can we just go rook d1 for example? I know because of. No, can we just go rook d1? Yeah, I think Chris Baker mentioned a line as well. Uh, how is yeah? But there's oh, something yeah, happened. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely right. Rook b1 is very strong because I'm down. Oh, nothing's b1. happened. Has something happened? I thought Simon. Finished. No, no, he, he just mentioned a variation. Sorry, let's just go back to see. Look, I think he was talking about the Chris was talking about after rook takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Was he was he talking really about rook? Not, not here, surely. Well, but then I've queen d forward check. That's what I was thinking. Mm, yeah, I don't think you want to allow to capture with check. Ninety six is just so. Beautiful. I mean, ninety six is beautiful as well, isn't it? I mean, if this happens, this, this, I'll, I'll be honest with you. This this would go down as the move of the year. I mean, it would have to, wouldn't it? I mean, in any tournament. I absolutely and just the beauty of the whole thing as well. Just like the beauty of like all these checkmates and you know, class, really, you know Simon really giving up his queen. Me, it really reminds me of a variation or, or a game I saw Ann Ann versus Lautier. Um, oh, it was. It was was it Anna versus Lord? I think it was Anna versus Lautier, and it was in it was in a um, it was something like Geneva, nineteen ninety seven, and it was it was in a uh, centre counter or Scandinavian. It was versus Lautier to Scandi. Arsenal found Richie's bloody good knowledge. I'm so impressed by him. It was. You're absolutely right, Danny. Was it was it nineteen ninety seven? Well, I didn't say the year, but he did say it was versus Lautier in the Scandi. Yeah, yeah, and it was a beautiful variation like this. I remember, yeah, it was very similar. By the way, I've got no doubt in my mind Rook takes B7 is going to happen. It's just a question of, I, I think he's just making sure, again, with, um, you know, that, it, that he's not missed anything so that he completely destroys, you know, like he does a sacrifice thing, misses one move by black, you know, like one defensive exactly. resource. And the thing is, uh, now we know the engine is saying that why it's winning. It's very easy to play this variation with Donnie, let me ask you this question, because this has been, I don't know if you've been part of this discussion, it's been touted, I've heard a couple of times. How much, instead of having engine help throughout a game, if yeah. you had, you you know, you being Danny Gourmet, how strong would you be if you had engine evaluation at every point during a game? Well, I remember, I remember Leco said about this, he said you, you wouldn't even need to know the, um, uh, the move, you just need to know the evaluation. And I think that's a very good. I think I'll. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how strong I'd be. I'd probably be twenty four sixty. I was going to go for like twenty three fifty, but. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know you would sorry you can be be stronger be a lot stronger because, um. You know, you you feel a lot more confident about what you're doing. Right? Oh, that's a good point as well. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it's yeah. unrealistic. I appreciate it's entirely hypothetical, but it might be a nice chance. Might be a nice challenge match because, as you know, Daddy, you absolutely crush me. If I had an engine evaluation, I wonder how much how much better off I'd still. I think I'd still lose. By the way, obviously, certainly in quick time controls because I wouldn't have the time to 
reference it. No, no, absolutely. But uh, there's a good point. Yeah, we, we, we'll get our match on. Yeah, the, the Gormani versus... Um, the handicap match. No, the Gormani versus the updated Blair. <laughs> the re what they called like reprogrammed effectively, like rebooted or something, isn't no, it? No, like, no, yeah, that, yeah. that, that, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen Terminator Dark Fate. The kind of, yeah, there's a kind of a human stroke android in that. Which is, enhanced, is, that's the word, isn't it? 2.0, absolutely. Blair enhanced, Blair versus 2. Blair fish, absolutely. I'm loving all these, these points. I still think we'd have to get the right time limit down here, of course, because... Obviously, yeah. five minute it wouldn't really help me because I'd, be, I'd probably spend too much time, you know, looking at the computer evaluation and not, which wouldn't really help. It'd have to be, obviously. I think Simon's getting ready to make a move. Right, I'll let's have a look. Let's get back to the board. Let's look at the live position and brilliant for everyone joining us. Rook takes Beast Jones on the board. Oh, this is Queen Sack. And Knight takes D4 on the board. Wow. Oh, come on. Wow. Oh, and Knight takes D4 immediately played. Incredible. It's all happened. Wow. 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 This is giving me goosebumps, Danny. I, this I is clearly, giving clearly, me she's got to be absolutely shocked by this i clearly turned up for the right the right the right the right game yeah you absolutely daddy what a pleasure and what a pleasure to see this he's played that knight takes d4 he didn't even 27 seconds obviously he he didn't even feel the need to double check it no, i think i think that's why he's checking the form because yeah. it's very easy yeah. it's very easy when yeah, you know the evaluation, but you know over the board you're very unsure that actually you know you feel like ninety four is good once you see the idea of ninety six, but you have to absolutely make sure of everything. Right? Yeah, because obviously, just to point like exactly what Daddy's saying, if you get to a position like this, you've sacrificed so much material. If Black had one way to survive here, you'd be lost, and you'd have lost everything, you know. But this is absolute. Well, Daddy, just sum it up for us in some words. How can we contemplate this? I mean, you've already said it'd be move of the year. Well, I think it is. I, I genuinely believe. I, I mean, mean, let's just look at this live. Knight takes d4. I don't know if anyone's noticed this queen is under attack on a4. I think the Nepo Ding game has a lot. But this will be going in so many different white to play and win, so many different, um, you know, uh, chess. Steph Kitch is on the board, by the way. This is a live position. No, it's on the board. Sorry, Danny, to interrupt you. Just to no, get this excited. will be going in so many chess positions. Uh, sorry, chess articles. You know, chess columns, and uh, so many, so many magazines and everything. It's just, yeah, it's just a phenomenal. I mean, this whole Ding Nepo match has got a lot to live up to now, right? <laughs> what, just because of Reykjavik round two? Is that what you're saying? Then we see there, we go. Oh, yeah. We can come up with a better idea than this 9d4, yeah. This is absolutely... So he clearly... Let's just go back a few moves. He clearly saw... Do you reckon he couldn't have seen this... Like, Dad, he couldn't have seen this idea from here, could he? Probably not. Well, I think when he went Queen A4, he saw it, yeah. Sure. I'm, 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 I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I definitely... Because otherwise, you, you, would, you would be very reluctant to play Queen A4 at all, right? Yeah, because um, almost it's getting... It's like putting your queen on a stupid square where you're allowing black to almost develop with tempo, you yeah. know, make some tempo gaining moves. I'm certain that you saw it when you went Queen A4, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is just stunning. Bishop D7, Rook B7, Knight D4, and Simon spotting the absolutely... As pointed out a few... Some time ago by Pluqua playing like stockfish ah oh, look at this fabulous beautiful gifting five tier one subs to the community thank you very much for your support we genuinely but couldn't I, I, do it I without saw you it, I, I saw it once you told me that there was there was a win here but whether i would have seen it uh you know if i hadn't known i, I did yeah i did you know but you're looking she, by the way daddy she's taken the queen this is absolutely yeah, i think she should do this out of principle it's almost like Getting checkmated, isn't it? What else? Remember. If you don't take the queen, you just piece. Oh, of down course, it. yeah. Sorry, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. She had to take the queen. So, sport. She's going to play the spoiling queen d7. Is that the only way to? Even so, the beauty's there on the board, isn't it? The beauty's there. I mean, the damage has been done, as they say. What about queen h4? No, I think she'll try something else. I think she'll try something like queen h4, right? Let's have a look. Queen h4. Can I try queen h4? You can try anything, Daddy. Of course. I mean, it might be. Yeah, I can't see. But thank you very much, and thank you very much to everyone of their support. But this Chris, might this mm. might end in a very beautiful way as well. I mean, I don't think the, the pyrotechnics are over yet. I mean, there's probably like a very beautiful way to win here, right? Yeah, I'm just wondering, of course, what it might be. But yeah. that's why I've got you, Daddy. That's why I've got you on the. 
That's why you got. That's why you got it. Commits. I mean, can I tell you what I'm? Th- can I tell you what I'm attracted to here? G three. G three. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely, we read my mind as well. You can read my mind as well. That was my idea. Just after all the pyrotechnics, just that quiet little G three, like okay, Queen, where are you going now, sort of thing. Your bishop D four check. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a good idea actually. But yeah. Okay, so let's go back and ask you what you think. What? Well, yeah, absolutely. We I mean, D three would work if it wasn't for bishop D four check. But then, uh... well, maybe there's a Queen. I don't know. Maybe there's a Queen. Uh... Well, I mean, you, uh, I think the problem is, I think. Can, here, can you just go like rook on b7 takes f7? Because then I'm threatening like uh, maybe bishop g6? Or is that too slow? I, uh, we need to take a small breath, don't we? Your idea of queen h4. There's also a suggestion of bishop takes e5 as well, but let's stick with the queen h4 for the time being, just to acknowledge that people are. We can, uh, if the, if you do have any ideas in the chat or you know what's happening, let us know, but don't let Danny know, basically. Um, yeah, I will say some suggestions because I know that Aldo wouldn't have looked this up. Don't, he's don't suggesting Rook. He's suggesting, well, no, he's not looked this up. He's suggest, just suggest this move, but isn't, is this annoying? Yeah, maybe then Rook F1, no, because if you go Queen E3 and, and Queen takes D3, I'll still have Rook E7, mate. Oh, it of course. Might well just be very strong, right? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, can I go bishop d4 though? Is that uh, bishop d4 king f1 maybe? I was thinking about after queen e1 just sacrifice my queen, but I've still got all the problems. I'm still getting. Am I still getting? I was thinking about queen e1. Did you want to block with the rook? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I, mean, I was thinking I might do this. I might do this now because the idea being that uh, I have actually vacated the d8 square with a sort of few tempo game yeah, moves. Yeah, but king tank, So then I'm threatening bishop g6 now. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah, I was thinking obviously just bishop takes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely quite right, Danny. I don't know. I don't know. He's moved, by the way. So, should we see what's happening? No, but yeah, she, oh, he's played knight takes e6, of course. I would we'll, try queen h4 as black. We were fully yeah. expecting that. Queen h4. Yeah, okay, let's keep looking at this and see. So, Aldo's saying rook ff7. I don't know if that's the best move. I know that Aldo probably never. Good move, yeah. Probably a good move. Um, so, if I go. But if I go bishop e5 now, is that a bit of an annoying move? Bishop takes e5? Yeah, apparently this was like Chris Baker's idea, maybe on the previous move, but it's still... Right. Uh, haven't we got rook e7 here, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe bishop, can I go bishop e4 then? Maybe cut off. Yeah, that, was, that might be... Uh, I've still got... No, I haven't got rook e7, obviously not. But I'm not, I've got knight... Well, I've certainly got knight g7, I don't know if that... Maybe I'll, go, maybe I'll go bishop g6. Bishop g6 here. Well, that looks incredibly strong, doesn't it? Because now the rook's moving with devastate. Well, this is a, a, yeah, yeah, a beautiful yeah. checkmate threat. This is obviously going to be checkmate of queen e1. Just to show that on the board. Queen e1 check, and the rook comes back, blocks the check, and it is checkmate once again from the bishop on g6. Mm-hmm. Apparently, we've got a suggestion here that apparently, and yeah, no, so you're absolutely right. That's exactly what you said again, Danny. Forgive me. Mm. So maybe queen h4 is the way forward she's down to nine minutes by the way is where we can see that on stream i actually set it up also Aldo's saying there might be a bishop f1 block as well in some oh so Aldo might be suggesting in this position daddy after rook here queen here just simply bishop f1 the thing is i you know i was, I was crit- slightly criticized because we've got this beautiful sorry again we've got this beautiful checkmate again this incredibly stunning checkmate here oh, with wow. bishop f1 that's beautiful so maybe rook so after queen h4 rook ff7 sets up all these mates again and it also sets up this idea now bishop g6 as well so but i think this is kind of back oh look things. at this one as well are they just coming in thinking fast we've even got ideas of like um oh just this beautiful as well we apparently i think we've even got this daddy oh my god we've even got this Oh <laughs> it just keeps on coming doesn't it yeah thank but you very much to move a ball for that one idea that's another i'm slightly criticizing simon for maybe sometimes that <laughs> but i think this is a game where even though he's, he's got a bit crazy he's done it in a logical way and, and yeah. it's absolutely correct to play the way he's played but it's also his calculation it's not what it, it's a sacrifice where he's concretely calculated out the lines and he's been able to do that yeah. and he knows yeah. that they're leading to like you know you could you could play that beauty i mean this is a kind of game that he's looking for every time he plays but you yeah. can play that kind of beauty without necessarily having to go gung-ho and occasionally you will get games like this 
But you can't expect it, as you're pointing out, Dan, you can't if your opponent plays in such a spoil a very solid, spoiling, decent way, you can't yeah. expect to have it every time. You can't create something out of nothing, can you? It's, exactly. But it's also ironic because he was trying to be solid earlier with this E six approach. <laughs> Isn't and it just, yeah? It's actually back fine. It actually we got this very, very sharp position. Yeah. Uh, well, probably just bad position for black. Well, I think I think if we look back on the evaluation, it's almost like you know, Black was in trouble, sort of like from a, you know, from an objective evaluation early doors and from a practical evaluation, it looked very difficult, didn't it? Just even, you know, White's moves looked very natural, didn't they, in the opening? You know, Bishop D3, as you were pointing out, casting potential on the king side, etc., etc. Apparently, Chris is telling us as well, Bishop takes E5 might just simply run into Rook FF7 as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, but also I could just take the queen. I'm sure I'm, I'm doing well if I just... Oh, right. So I didn't even notice, by the way, I didn't notice the queen was hanging. By the way. <laughs> well, I think this is a case where you probably would just take the queen because after king... T I guess you have to take the king because otherwise rookie seven. Uh, yeah, and then just winning, but just winning by material. So what Daddy's pointing out there is after this, rook takes, rook here, king yeah. here. We've got this idea. So this is just simply winning on material and position as well. But most importantly, white's just a piece up. So there's nothing to see here at grandmaster level. You know, bigger piece up with compensation is quite enough. Um, yes. Sorry, some things have happened. No, they haven't. Sorry, forgive me. But Getting excited, take, understandably. If you play with the king, uh, Blair, yeah. uh, after bishop e5, yeah. I, I guess we are probably lose it because the king is still too high, even in the end game. Uh, yeah, I was thinking just to play Rook FF7 here, and yeah, I'd like, yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, we've got maybe some ideas of, I don't know what's coming in. I, mean, but, I don't think but, Simon right. would, I think Simon would go for the Chris line because. Uh, maybe, maybe I could just, maybe I could just play here, Daddy. What about this? No, but the kids, sorry, the kids run away. I'm sorry, I'm making things up now. Let me go back. Yeah, but you, you clearly, well, the worst case scenario, you regain your material, right? Um, yeah, indeed, yeah. So clearly your whole idea has worked, but but I think Chris's idea is more likely to occur because Cyber's looking, we've already established Cyber's trying to, not just try to win the game, he tried to win in a beautiful way. So, so... Oh, Danny, there's a move here. Trainer Emil in the chat. I think there's a, there's, I think there's a, just a, 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 basically a very forced win here. If there's such thing as very forced. Uh, don't tell me what it is. All I'll right. try and work it out. Oh, it's beautiful as well, by the way. Wow, thank you, trainer Emil, first time chat. Making a great point in a first time chat. Nice. Forcing Daddy, it's forcing. I'll give you a clue. Is it forcing, is it? Yeah, like, yeah. Checks and captures job. <laughs> oh, just night G seven. Yeah, just night G seven, yeah, absolutely. In, wow. Thanks very much for the raid, lady. Lazarus, no need for Simon to come back from the dead here. Welcome to the Raiders. You joined us as I say, a propitious moment. Simon has sacrificed his queen, or temporarily sacrificed his queen, we should say. And he's got this beauty as well, where just to follow the line through, bishop takes g7 and rook e1. The king once again. She has played my queen h4 move. She has played queen h4, well predicted, Danny. Yeah. So let's yeah. go on the board. Yep, she has indeed. We'll wait just for that live feed to update. From a practical perspective, you've got to give it a punch. So I think that this is a problem with Simon's style as well. He does play very creatively as well, and very aggressively. Very, you do put a lot of pressure on yourself to to to, mm. to follow it up accurately. You know, if you play kind of a boring positional player, yep. you're not. You know, you can plod along a bit. But with Simon, you know, and myself to a degree, because I try to play quite sharply. You're putting yourself under a lot of pressure to. to so let's hope that he can continue. Yes, it's a high, it's high, as you know better than I do, because I'm more the former type of player than the latter, but it's high energy chess. You've got to keep that that mental tempo up. You've got to keep the pressure up in positions. Yeah. You know, you've got to be prepared to tr calculate, as you know, obviously as much as possible and make sure that you don't, you know, in these type of big sacrificial attacks, even if they're working, mm. you've got to be confident that you haven't overlooked any single move. That's right, and it's very easy to slip up here. It'd be very easy to slip up here and, and play like a weak move. And I mean, is there any other move than Rook F takes F7, I'm wondering? Did we establish that that was winning? That was I think we have established that that's winning, yeah. It seems to me that the way that chat's talking about it, the fact that Aldo suggests it, I don't, Aldo, Aldo's just afraid of tactics. You have a direct threat of, I think, forced mate, haven't you, with just, just Rook F to E7, because I don't think the black can defend against that mate. Yeah, so this is a beautiful just to point yeah. out this is the this is an immediate threat of checkmate yeah. so 
So, so, so you need something really, really. And do we say? Um, and, and we look at this. So Bishop B4. We said this as well. Rook here. Queen okay, takes. Yeah, Bishop, Bishop G6. Queen here. Bishop G. Bishop takes F7. His mate as well. Oh my days. I think this is, this is actually like an immortal game. Yeah, I think she. I, I hope she plays to mate as well in a sense like this. Almost. I mean, I appreciate she doesn't want to do that, but definitely for the crowd, she wants to try and find a way to survive. But it'd be a shame if she survives like a rook down. If you know what I mean, Danny. Well, no, I mean, I had a really beautiful game, uh, which is a very famous game against Emil Sotovsky, who was known who was known for playing like these brilliant games anyway. But that was his best ever game, which I was kind of proud to be a part of. And there was a moment right at the end where I could have played on, but it was like a hopeless technical position. And I decided I'd rather resign in that position because mm. I felt like it, was more, it, it made the game more beautiful. Yeah. And he, he said after the game, yeah, I appreciate that you resigned there rather than... Uh, rather than know. people having to have it come up in a book loads of times and then like the addendum is like like 20 lines of just like you mucking around, you know, just losing yeah. eventually. Like That's people true. are like bored of like having to play through the last 30 moves of a comfortably technically winning position, you know, without any commentary, etc. Yeah, indeed. Exactly, exactly. So I think Simon's capable of calculating rook, takes, uh, rook on F takes F7. Bishop D4, I think King F1 is good. Or King H1, I think they're both good. Let's just have a look at what Danny's saying. So Rook, F takes F7, just pointing out, this is a very massive threat of mate after Rook yeah, takes yeah. the knight covering all the escape squares. The bishop supporting, obviously, the Rook on E7. Danny's saying Bishop D4, trying that for black. And then you could probably go King F1 anyway, can't you? Or King H1 probably doesn't spoil anything, does it? I think King F1 is, is not bad because you're covering F2, right? Well, yeah, indeed. So you're covering, obviously, there's no, there's the rook in. I mean, on I'm struggling to see a way that black can, actually, is, after rook takes f7, can you go bishop oh. c2? Sorry, Danny, say that again. I was just reading the chat. I apologise. I'm momentarily distracted. Yeah, yeah. Now, I wanted to try it. Has he taken on f7? I guess he has. Right? Let's have a look. No, maybe he hasn't. Oh. No, maybe he hasn't. He has. Yeah, coming. Yeah. No, oh, we Oh, you have little faith, Danny Gormally. Oh, you have little faith. No, I thought I saw. This I, was to, is... I was trying to make out the board, and I thought the this is. So, as pointed out by Maximilian underscore ninety one, the only way this game could improve if the H pawn was somehow on H four at some point. But of course, the problem is you could try moves like Bishop C two, um, with the idea of Bishop takes C two. You know, maybe then Queen E one. Uh, but the problem is this bishop b5 mate as well so you can't move <laughs> it's just this unbelievable we've still got this rookie seven mate as well haven't we danny but yeah well i don't know which position you're talking yeah, about I but mean, like oh in my days it's just a thing of absolute beauty it's, down... it's, it's easy to use hyperbole when when you're when you're doing the commentary and mm. a lot of commentators do but i genuinely believe this is game of the year really like, in any tournament you do you know what i mean like, yeah, i do I, D Danny, I've, I mean, Danny, I think I could play two lifetimes and not play a game like this, I'll be honest with you. I've never played it. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've done a double rook sacrifice. I've done queen sacks before, but not one as beautiful as this. And I've done... Oh, hang on a minute. I've just got to go to the door because I've got a package. Okay. Well, okay, well, anyway, for... No, don't... Mo but Moogleborn, do not worry too much. Moobot, we're not a big fan of Moobot, obviously. Capital letters, not necessary, but we understand... You can understand my tone and intonation of excitement about this, by the way. We thought he was joking. Well, no, Daddy's not joking, Bo. He's picking up the package. Maybe it's sent by his former team sponsor, Blackthorn Transport. I don't know if I should go into that. Anyway, for those of you who are watching, what an unbelievable position we see at the moment. Indeed, Simon is temporarily without a queen. However, in the fullness of time, we suspect that to be the, the balance to be restored by Black losing their king effectively in this case is this simon's immoral i think that probably means immortal but more importantly is this simon's immoral game maybe it is maybe daddy's package is the immoral package or daddy's package is the immortal package i don't know i can't really say that daddy's anyway back to the game it is immoral it's absolutely dirty isn't it it shouldn't be allowed this is this shouldn't be allowed rook f takes f7 she's down to less than two minutes on her clock wow, wow. Daddy, you've got the package through. I sent you the package, Daddy. Got, you got it. Oh, cheers, mate. Don't open it on stream, by the way. Won't open it on stream. No, definitely yeah, don't. So there was a question. I think Aldo made a typo. He said, "Is this Simon's immoral game?" 
I think it is. I think. No, but, but, but he said a moral, game. Danny. Yeah, just for the record. Just be to... interesting to say to him afterwards: Is this the best game you've ever played? Because I think I'll be honest with you: If if I played this game, <laughs> this beautiful ninety four move, it probably would be the best game mm. I've ever played. It's certainly it's be what, the best game I've ever played, without doubt. Absolutely. Right. Certainly one of the best games I've ever played. But interesting to know, like if you said to him afterwards, uh, <laughs> "Is this the best game you've ever played?" Yeah, I think it, I mean it's a beautiful idea. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be like appear everywhere now. It's just gonna appear. Everywhere. I mean, it's just the num the sheer number of checkmates that White has, and the sheer beautiful difference of like the checkmates as well. From from my perspective, not just the sacrificing. It's just the fact that all these the bishop g six checkmate, the knight g seven checkmate, the rookie seven checkmate. Just so many. Also, beautiful... I think it, I think it bodes well for Simon's chances at all because I think if you oh, play this moves game, by the way, sorry, Dave. Yeah, let's hope he can finish off. If you play a game like this, it gives you a lot of confidence. And, you know, even though I lost that Sutovsky game, the fact I was involved in it at all, you know, gave me a lot of confidence. Bishop B4 on the board. This is forced mate, isn't it? Oh, wow. This, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. Oh, it's yeah. forced mate. Oh, this is just, it's going to end in mate as well. She's going to play it out, surely. It's mate in three. Rookie wow. seven is mate. Oh, wow. Queenie seven, Bishop. Oh, my. This is extraordinary, isn't it, Danny? This is a privilege to be a part of this, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, she is quite Come a low-rated I mean, low player. But if if you, you know, Danny, to most Danny, with respect to most people, she's better than ninety nine point nine nine percent of chess players oh, no, in the world. Is she? I, I mean, mean, come on. I suppose the only thing you would say if it was against somebody higher rated, but it's still a fantastic game. Like you know, he did play Ricky Seven, not Bishop G Six, didn't he? Surely. Rook F E Seven was forced mate. I'm sure you'll see that. He's played Rook F Eight. Oh my. <laughs> Oh my days! That's even quicker, isn't it? Same, well, same idea, yeah. Same oh, idea. sorry, but say Bishop, Bishop F, Bishop F seven's mate, yeah. Wow. I thought rookie seven was prettier, by the way, but maybe I'm. Oh, I have, I have, sorry, forgive me. I'm talking nonsense. Rook F eight. This is just. She should play it out, surely. It's a fantastic game. It this is, is unbelievable, game. isn't it? She should play no, it no, out, no. surely. So I obviously, mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is an amazing game. Oh, she's shaking hands. What an unbelievable game by Simon Williams there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is. Okay. Checkmate was going to appear on the board. What an absolutely brilliant game by Simon Williams. Danny suggesting, yeah, of course. Danny suggesting it's already big contender for game of the year. What an incredible well, game he's had there. I if I see a better game this year. Like, yeah. I'm not and, sure I've ever, ever seen a better game full stop. <laughs> really? Let's just look just to show what could have happened, just for, in case people are in any doubt what, what was going to happen next. Bishop g6, the rook has to block, and then bishop takes f7 is indeed checkmate. What an absolute privilege to be part of this game. I can't believe commentary would be so much fun. Danny, thank you for doing it alongside me as well. I appreciate it. I enjoy doing it, yeah. Love it. Oh, he's got to be absolutely buzzing after that. Thank you very much to everyone who's watched. We will um, have a little look. Dad, you've got time just to go over the game one more time. I think it's yeah, really yeah. worth It's yeah, just yeah. worth it. Thanks very much to everyone in the chat for being so polite. Obviously, massive appreciation. Let's just go through this game, Daddy, from the absolute get-go. And I'll let you have a little, a few words in edgeways now, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we started off D4, D5. C4, C6, uh, her, his opponent presumably hoping for a solid game, you know, take him to an end game, maybe try and hold him, whatever. He plays the exchange Slav to actually play like this kind of creative pawn set because very few players would play the exchange Slav. In fact, I might, well, I, I shouldn't say anything, but I might, I might show my student this idea because... Oh, it's very well, as I say, it's a stupid idea. Very quickly, Mike well, Coker. Mike Coker, no need for the question mark. Thanks very much, he, by he the way. He's basically playing slow, but he certainly doesn't play it like the way Simon played it. So uh, let yeah, so let's have a look. So normally, so after takes takes knight c three, knight f six. I believe that the move that, that the sort of the move that most people play in this position is bishop f four yeah. to not commit the knight to f three. Not because you want to go pawn to f three anytime mm -hmm. soon necessarily, but you might want to go e three and. The knight might come to e2 in some lines. However, Simon had very different ideas. And apparently we're told it's called the Boer attack. An idea, I believe, which was kind of inspired or given, I don't know if it was given to him, by Ingvar himself. Zibit. Yeah, f3, very nice move. f3. Yeah. 
And you were talking about the concepts here, Danny. Obviously, you appreciated the idea of Knight C6 taking the line on. You also pointed out why it would be understandable if she did kind of what she did in the game, which was to play with E6, attempting to avoid, quite ironically, attempting to avoid any any quick problems. And yet, I anything quite, but... I think somebody mentioned in the chat earlier whether, whether there's a move E5 here, but it probably doesn't quite work. If Black could go E5 in one move, just just to just quickly mention that. Sure, of course. Yeah, I don't know. So we could have a look at it. I mean, it's like we've got a little bit of time. I mean, fortunately, it's quite a quick day at the office due to his extraordinary play. Quite yeah. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still no, in a bit I'm of a state of I'm shock, to be honest with you, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little he bit. Takes, he, he takes E5 and then a move like Knight H5, but it's probably too much. I'd absolutely, if I was Simon, I'd absolutely be insisted they carried out a sort of device check just so that there's no, no one can ever, ever even cast any. I know that's not the case, but there we go. No, but I mean, I know Simon, I know anything. Oh, we know, of course, Danny, and, and, of course. We've both known him for years. We know that he's capable of finding these ideas because yeah. this is the way that he likes to play. He likes to play creative chess. Well, it's amazing to think how it tied in. I mean, not because we had a crystal ball, but our discussions about his sort of sacrificial sacrificial um yeah. you know concepts and everything yeah. else and you know you got yeah, you okay. gotta stay true to your beliefs um yeah okay you know yeah i was saying the statistic there are occasions where it needs to rein that in and i think often you, when you're sacrificing material as well is in situations where you're worse and 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 it makes your situation even worse right so so he doesn't necessarily relate to this game because he was always better and it's a position where he could afford to sacrifice because he's sacrificing from a position of strength. Yeah. By the way, the next round, just to, again, forgive me, Dan, I'm trying to juggle a few balls, so to speak. The next round is in four hours' time. It's five o'clock. So four o'clock GMT, four o'clock Iceland time, five o'clock British summer time, six o'clock Central European time. Thank you for letting me interrupt you. So five, uh, four hours' time, I believe, is the next round from now in four hours. Oh, yeah. So, um, sorry, back to what you were saying, Daddy. Yeah, of course, you appreciate that he needed to, he didn't, he was in a position of strength already here. And he's, you know, yeah. it's very concrete. It was concrete what he did, I guess. So anyway, moving on, his opponent in this position played the understandable E6 in order to try and keep everything, you know, tight at the back, as they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that E4 was a good move. E4, yeah. Oh, because what you say, A. Oh, I'm sorry for everyone, okay. forgive me. Apologies, just a wrong mouse click there. And then Black decided to take, do you think in hindsight, taking on E4 is a good idea, Daddy? I mean, I know hindsight's like, you know, pretty much yeah, 2020 in a sense. I mean, you could, it is true that you, you are, you are allowing the knight to go to F3 then, which is creating more danger. But the, I suppose the problem that Black has, if they play a move like knight c 6 here, and then E5 comes, how do you ever create counterplay against the white center? Yeah, and it looks like a very good sort of French, doesn't it, already? Like where Black's exactly. committed to taking on D4 already. White's going to get, I guess, F4 and Knight F3 and very quickly. And you don't even have the yeah. tension, the sort of key French defense type tension on D4 to hold you together, I guess. No, that's right. Yeah. So, so and also, so you're probably not very familiar with the French full stop. The opening, so, obviously, you mean, yeah? His opponent would probably not that familiar with these kind of structures. Sure. So, so Bishop B4 is entirely understandable. More dynamic move. And take here and go Bishop B4. But as I think I explained earlier, it's, it's similar to a line of the Karakhan and a fantasy variation. Yeah. And their white scores very heavily. So, um, yeah, so she took on E4 and it. And it I know, but maybe this is where... So she took on E4 here, Blair, right? That's right, she took on E4. I mean, which, just to very quickly point out people in the chat, I mean, they're suggesting sort of like you can go back here, but the point is that, okay, it's not going to be winning for White immediately, but Black's just in a horrible, a pretty passive, you know, no counterplay type position. So that explains why we believe she took on E4 in this position. But I think after taking on E4, I think actually a better move than Knight C... I think maybe Knight C6 was the mistake. Maybe Bishop D4 immediately would have been a problem. Why is that Why is that the case? Ah, oh, but then we said before that Bishop D3 was was a bit annoying. Yeah, we said Bishop D3 was still possible. But, but still maybe after Bishop D3, then you could play somebody like E5. Because because then if, if D5, then I'm not hitting the Knight... Yeah, very good, yeah. 
And then if you take, I still have this guy G4. And, and Hold like, on, look, can, I, can, I, can I go Queen A4 check immediately? Ah, oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And D5, I'll blunder it. I'll blunder it. Uh, Casey, I could even a blind squirrel daddy finds a nut from time to time, and that's how I feel in that situation. Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I mean, that not, work, though, I've got don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I just took it off the board immediately, daddy, so you can fact check me, basically. I'm just like moving on. You have Queen A4 at the end, uh, Queen A5 at the end of that live left. Oh, so here. So e, E5, Queen A4, Knight C6, D5, Queen A5, no? Yeah, yeah. Bishop b5, I'm not getting anywhere, am I? No. b5, uh, bishop takes c3. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, and if a5, it's able to die, maybe I'll survive, yeah. Yeah, indeed. So, like, maybe this again, because certainly what happened in the game was, was you know, it's quite hard not to find something which is. That's a bit, bit, feeling a bit. Yeah, hot, yeah. Hot, I think I'm feeling a bit tough on her because this was a. It was like, you know, good luck putting up your sort of shack in front of a like tornado, and especially a ginger GM sized tornado coming in at you in this nah, form. It's, nah, like, it's a morning game. It's you're going to get blown away, aren't you? Basically, whatever you do. It's a morning game, and, and it's, it's tough to play. It's tough to play Black's position. So she tried knight c6, right? So yeah. she tried in this position, go back. She actually played knight c6. Knight c6 before bishop b4, right? Yeah, knight, knight f3. Knight bishop b4. Bishop d3. Protecting the pawn on e4, which yeah, is that now. And we were struggling. I mean, I, I, I think it really says. I mean, I appreciate there was an eye concept behind Bishop a5, but I felt, you know, already if Black's having to make move a piece twice in the opening like this, I know it's a cliche, but I understand it had some ideas of, of vacating the b4 square mm. for the mm. tactics, maybe coming back, but it felt to me White's already now gonna you know got that center gonna go back ahead in development potentially after bishop a5 it felt to me if black was playing bishop a5 it's already gone wrong yes yes um let me see with a computer whether there are any improvements for black around do you, want me to, do you want me to put the computer on should i just put the should i be honest with people put the computer on we haven't had it on at no, one I, moment I, of all I, I can run it okay that's fine i don't know i've not I got it, run it. it you know i'm, I'm a control freak so i like that's to, fine I like, you, yeah, please do I, I like to control everything right so okay yeah beautiful game beautiful game let, let, let me let me check to see how accurate cyber's play was because you know i i also do this, this other thing now where i uh, i run an accuracy model so my 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 theory is based on how often you hit the top three moves of the computer right so yeah of course that's i know that's right so one of the big regan theories as well by the way yeah. so yeah let me let me let me run this game very quick i'll just run it very very quickly and then, uh, yeah, it did say bishop b4 was a better move than knight c6. But he still said knight c6. But already after, yeah, bishop d3 was top move, right? Mm hmm. White is already clearly better. Right, already. Now, how much better would you, how much better? I mean, it's just to give people a. a plus one of a pawn or plus. Yeah, maybe not that bad, yeah, but already like plus over minus. Yeah, okay, I've got that's already quite, you know, nine moves in, that's already pretty, pretty damn good, isn't it? Plus one. I mean, it means the black's gone a bit wrong already. It's not necessarily losing. Maybe if you gave stop for his is back, they'd hold it, maybe. Oh, there, but there it's was on a the trick, cusp. by the way, Blair. There's a, there's a trick, actually. You know, we mentioned this, uh, we mentioned this, you know, instead of, instead of knight c6, bishop b4, right? Can I go back? Yeah, just go back a couple of moves, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. It, sure. Yeah, it's a very important trick, right? Mm hmm. After after like uh, bishop b4 here, which is the top move, uh -huh. and it says that what white's only very slightly better, that's a better move. Bishop b4. Yep. If if bishop d3 is a blunder, okay, there's actually a sacrifice. There's, there's a tactic here for black. Not a what? It's a very nice tactic. Because otherwise, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just... Sorry, sorry, so black can play queen takes d4, you're saying here? No, not queen takes Oh, sorry, sorry, I thought, sorry, sorry. I was going to, that's why I shake about it. I was thinking you were saying black can play queen. There's a very nice no, idea. No, no, there is, there is a tactic. Oh, so knight takes e4, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I see, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. So, and then, so actually, actually, you can't play bishop d3, which you do. Ah, so it's very important. So it really is. So Chris Baker spotting as well, yeah. Oh, by the way, I didn't look at the chat. I don't have an edge of running. Had I looked at the chat, I would have got it quite a bit quicker, but spotted something there so i uh, so it's quite so this move order is very important to not allow white to have this this perfect setup the night stopping 
Yeah, but you know, no, it's interesting that, okay, in the game, see when Bishop A5, Blair? Okay, so let's go, let's go back to the game, which went nice to six, night three, which before Bishop D3, and I was critical of this move, yeah? Yeah, but I think the computer takes a while. Uh, instead of, yeah, people would point out H6 was better, or even going back with the, the Bishop to E7 was better. Which, oh, is which it is really like that? Okay. Very hard move to, to yeah. play. Like you, like you were saying, psychologically, if you play this bishop b4, even if Stockfish was able to find bishop e7 here because it's got no emotional baggage of playing bishop b4, it's that's really right. an unhuman, it's almost inhumane move to play if that's the answer. I know it's exactly, not. Exactly, where, where it's actually. Um, so the moves he played bishop a5, and the computer takes a while to realize how strong this e5 It initially wants to go bishop d5, but it takes a while to realize how strong. How good is Bishop B5, by the way, Danny? It's a sort of like more normal move. I've got my pills there because I've got this pain, so I need to take one of my pills. Hang on, I'll come back in a second. That's fine. I'm just wondering for the chat as well, if you're just joining us. We've seen some history today, I would imagine. Another chapter written in the annals, and I say that correctly, of the Ginger GM. I was just mm. saying, Danny, we've seen another chapter written in the annals of the Ginger GM. Mm. Do you think they're going to? Do you think they're going to inscribe this on this epitaph, this exact game, and just like here lay this game? Well, I think. Well, I said before, it'd be interesting to ask him how how high he would rate this game because I think this is probably the best game, one of the best games he would have ever played. Right? It's hard not to, isn't it? By the way, I was just asking the question, Daddy. How good is Bishop B five? Is that still? I mean, it's still a nice position for White instead of E five. Bishop B five instead of E five here. Is that what you said was the alternative computer oh, no, move? Bishop, Bishop G five. Oh, Bishop G five. Sorry, forgive yeah. me. And that that just that looks pretty nice for White, but it's not he, as strong he, as E five. But it takes a while to realise how strong E five is. Wow, that's impressive. That he, he so played. You, you were saying E five earlier yourself. You pointed out E five, and I wasn't sure about E five at all. But as you know, Danny, I didn't I didn't say it for like the the all the genuine reasons. I just said it as an idea. It wasn't because I. You know, obviously I'd seen any of these, I'd seen all these follow-ups. I'd seen the idea of these castles and it just felt to me like a Simon Williams yes. move. It felt to me like the sacrifice move that he'd play, basically. But but it also it also likes just castling knight d4 and e5 anyway. It says that's very good for That me. looks quite nice, actually. That looks like quite a nice line lead, because we could yeah. have, obviously, crushing ideas of this, for example. Yeah. Just the lead in development. So the black, yeah, it says after bishop c3, rook b1, white is already winning. Oh wow! So the variation we got given live was so. Just let's carry on the game. Went e5, knight d5. Material just make just re remind me. Of material level at this point. Only after this point is white pawn down. But already the computer was saying objectively it's winning for white. Clearly, practically, it's very hard. I, I think the best line is bishop d4. Yeah, bishop um, d4 here. So yeah. absolutely what we were saying. Yeah. Yeah. King h1. Take on e5 with a bishop. Yeah. Uh, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop b5 check. Yeah, this is the line that Pluqua was pointing out. And then bishop d, uh, queen e2, is this the idea? Yeah, yeah. 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 And then we get this, we get this, I think we get this position here, which we're talking about. Yeah. Where, where like, white, play, uh, white plays bishop a3. How does white follow this up, by the way, Danny? So... So a6, let me just make a move, a6. Uh, yeah, so hang on, let me just get to it. Yeah, sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so let's play this out. Bishop d7, queen e2. Only move to be get, get an advantage is queen e2, actually. By yeah, way. it's quite hard to see, maybe. But knight yeah. c6. So you go knight c6, or are you taking on d b5? I'm just going to take. I'm going to take. I'm going to go knight d7 here as my deal. It's up to you, Dad. You okay. can tell me where you want to go. No, no. So bishop takes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, queen takes knight d7. Bishop a3. Yeah. And then you wanted to do... No, just A6. I just want to give an example on how, how... Because I'm just trying to break the pin. Just like... It you know. says just queen takes B7, rook B8, queen A6 is winning. Because you still can't... Red black just can't move, basically, yeah? Black can't move anything. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's gone. So in the games, you went at H6, which is pretty much... I mean, everything's losing, so it doesn't really matter. And it says the best move is actually... Yeah, bishop A3 or... Also, King H1 is equal. I said, I think I mentioned King H1. You mentioned King H1 with the idea of then pursuing the attack. So, what, but the, the, the thing, obviously, we we're talking about yeah. your candidate ideas. Why was after King H1 castles? Is it Bishop takes H6 or something immediately, or is that? Um, I think it says. 
There's a lot. Yeah, Bishop 86 is winning. Yeah, and and then yeah, yeah. Just, someone mentioned that in the chat. By the way, I'm not stealing it. Someone mentioned oh, some right. ideas of this, and then Queen like this. Queen yeah. Queen yeah. Queen someone one. mentioned in the chat. So shout out to I think it was I think it was Mugglebomb who mentioned it in the chat. Actually, he's he's just reminding us. We can scroll back up two hours earlier and see that he did actually say that at the time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. credits to him for pointing out, reminding us that was the case. And I, you know, honesty here, Danny, I wasn't going to claim it for myself anyway. Did he find it himself or did he find it with the engine? Though? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to ask him. It's like, you know. A3 is like the top move, right? And it says it's winning. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it's very slightly better than King H1, but mm -hmm. both are winning. Queen A4. And it sorry, says, sorry, which move now? Sorry, forgive me. After Bishop A3. Yeah, Bishop A3, A5. Was that a good punt by Black? Yeah, I mean, he said that's as good as anything. It's just right, yeah. that Black's already dead lost. Okay, yeah. So I was critical of that move as well, so I apologise to to uh, Rachmanculova just for my curt Queen response to this move. Queen A4. Yeah. And now it says pretty much, yeah, even the computer wouldn't defend this. Like, Rook B8 is bad. Uh, G5 <laughs> is one of the... Like, oh it shows God. how desperate oh, Black's right. position is. That it says G5 is one of its top moves. Yeah, I mean, it's because it doesn't actually in any way, shape or form, prevent any white moves and doesn't really get any counterplay. It's like... No, just that, I mean, I, the only idea is to go G4 and then take with the Queen on D3. Oh, okay. So there is an idea. Sorry, again. But white I mean, has like Rook C1 ideas first. So white gets in first. So just so, to, to respond to G4, just take it on C3, yeah? So G... Yeah, I mean... Uh, well, everything wins. Even d5 after g5 is crushing. Okay, that's quite. And then queen takes? Uh, so bishop b4 or something, maybe. Or yeah. And yeah. all the pieces are kind of like flooding in, aren't they? It's like, oh. Yeah, my bishop days. b5 is crushing. Bishop b5, yeah. The rook comes to d1, yeah, it's just like over, yeah. So, so, so you try bishop d7, which is. And now rook b7 is the only winning move. So bishop d7 to so rook b7 is the only winning mover. Sorry, let me go back to the position. She played the understandable bishop d7 and Simon. Let me just check the move the times here. How long did it, it took 13 minutes to play rook b7, by the way? This is the top line of the engine, 94, 94 is the top it line. It is the top line. Yeah. So but basically black is just lost and what emerges like in the best case style, yeah. like what that rook, like a rook for two pieces down and busted. It, it looks losing because you've got rook on b7, bishop on a3. In the opening, something's gone wrong to allow that, right? You sure. But still, you you need to see this knight d4 move because if you don't, so how bad is? How, but actually, it's kind of spoiled by the fact that queen c4 is also winning. Oh, uh, you were correct, Daddy. So like, I did. I was quite happy I asked you that question, and you said like queen. C4. But then what about rook c8? I think we didn't really look at this because yeah, obviously we're so yeah. excited about the the best continuation. Queen how a6. Does... Queen a6. Now, if you go back to a8. Yeah. I have, I have rook d7 for example that's yeah, okay then you've got this rook d7 idea again where the we've queen got, is overloaded yeah. queen d6 is also winning yeah so i think that shows that even though knight d4 is very very beautiful <laughs> Absolutely. in winning positions there's often more than one way to win yeah and there's obviously the beautiful way is brilliant and i'm sure that he they did actually play very importantly how long do you take over knight takes d4 yeah 27 seconds so He'd obviously had seen it well in advance and obviously before. Yeah. Long, but I, I think it's true, but he played Queen A4 at least, if not earlier. Then, mm. yeah. Let's just let's just finish the end. I'm under strict orders, Daddy, not to um, have any beer at all, but I feel almost obliged to have a, 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 a beer after that. You know, I've got to work this evening. I'm not are going. You, are you doing the afternoon game? Yeah, I'm doing it as well, yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I would have several beers. Yeah. I'm not going to do that, of course, but I just feel almost obliged after such a, a piece of like immortalness. Not to have a little celebration, of course. I'm but not going to do that. Very, week. Very nice. I mean, other than that, I wouldn't say the game really stood out, but it's just the whole idea of going 94, 96. Is so let's just let, Danny, I'll just uh, thank you for before, before we conclude with the last few moves of the game. It has, as ever, been an absolute pleasure you joining me. I know that people have absolutely loved hearing from you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're not just all the reaction you've got back from the people in the chat has been so positive and. You know, you've given us so many things to think about in terms of like your analysis, your thoughts, your your evaluation of people sacrificing, and what a day to join me. How did you feel about it all, Danny? Yeah, no, I really, I really enjoyed doing comment. I mean, I don't do commentary enough, you know. I agree. But, um, I, I quite enjoy it, you know. Like, I mean, that that is the way chess is going now. It's very hard to make a living from uh, playing chess. I mean, Simon is playing in this tournament and. 
I mean, you know, I don't know what the prize structure is, but, you know, generally he played in these opens now where he's quite strong. It's, it's tough to make a profit. I mean, Danny, there's no doubt he's going to like... It, there's no doubt. If, I mean, I imagine even if he won... If, I think he'd have to win this tournament not to lose money almost. I genuinely think that. Yeah, but... Yeah, but I think that's true for, for, for most of us now when we play tournaments is... Uh, yeah, obviously I don't do as well as Simon. You know, when it comes to uh, you know videos and everything, but it's still it's it, you know from a purely yeah, it's easier just to stay at home and and do coaching or to uh, you know do videos than it or to write books than it is to actually you know play chess tournament. You know, it was Simon. I mean, it's a thing. It's very easy to forget he's a good player because. He, you know, he does all these kind of videos and everything. And, you know, he's a very popular streamer and very popular commentator. It's very, very easy to forget that he's actually a very good player as well. Well, when, it, when he's on form, you know, it's, wow, he can play incredible chess as we saw today. to see if he plays tournaments like the British Championships, because I think he'd have a, a good chance of winning. You know, um, he's one of the best players in the country. So, you know, he's got something to prove, I think, in terms of, uh, or he's got things still to prove in terms of you know he can still show how good he is and i think he showed it in this game but now he needs to keep going again yeah. it's gonna be a tough player. game this afternoon obviously he's gonna have black well, that, that's the test you know yeah. when you're up against the big boys you know the 26 have you got that comp can you take that confidence but he's was... shown in the past that when he's confident he can he can beat these guys i think he just needs to rein it in a bit i was just... going to ask you that daddy i mean I, how would you feel how do you think under the second question is how do you think simon's feeling about you know, can he calm down from that sort of piece of like uh, almost a morsel game? Can he calm down? You know, I, I, I think I think he will be calm. I think um, he will be in a very good state of mind. As I said before, you know, when you have a game like that, it gives you a lot of confidence. But equally, you need yeah. I think if he just he's I can tell on the stream that he's sensible. You know, he's probably not really like you know caning it at this tournament. He's taking it reasonably seriously. Absolutely. But, we're hearing, by the way, we're hearing from from Charlie, the chess cat, obviously it's K, that he's or he's calming, he's calming. No, we don't want him on stream. Certainly, no. He needs to like, he really needs time for himself to start the process of yeah, like really coming, good. not coming. It sounds like a very strange thing to say, coming to terms with such a masterpiece. You know, it's almost like you know, you've, it's like your your magnus opus, isn't it, Danny? And then you sort of sit back. You can yeah. you understand we sit back and just go, you know, look what I've created. It's like well, that, that, I mean, that's the problem with two games a day. Because I'll be honest with you, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he should be allowed to go out and dine out on this one, yeah, shouldn't he? And talk about it all night, you know? Enjoy that game tonight. I mean, I've yeah. had situations myself in the past where you played a nice game. Not that nice, but when you played a nice game in the morning and then you go away and you're like, yeah, I really enjoy it. And then you, you're thrown back in in the afternoon, mm. often against somebody who's quite tough. And Yeah, because uh, you've just won as well. So you're moving up the rankings, et cetera, et cetera, obviously. You want, so, to, yeah. just, you want to just chill out and enjoy yourself and just say, yeah, I played that great game. Let's go down the pub. Let's... But, but equally, at the same time, it might work in his favour because it might be like, yeah, I'm, I'm like buzzing. Let's take the momentum into the afternoon game. It's not broken up. Uh, let's try and like you know play. I think you just got to take it sensibly and sure. just try and play decent chess. You know, and and not worry too much about the result, and not worry too much about you know where I'm going to finish in the tournament and so on, and just just try and play better. You know, um, you, yeah, you can't play any better than that. But I mean, just just try and yeah, just try and be consistent. Yeah. So, Daddy, just before before we go, and I'm, I'm looking forward to take a break if that's not too rude sure, to you. Obviously, sure. I'd love, no, no, I really no, would I'm, love I'm, I'm to spend more time. Just yeah. before, we will finish the game on the last few moves. Before we do that, just to remind everyone, Danny has got a fantastic course, and I mean this sincerely, it's helped my chess a hell of a lot. The course that he's done for Ginger GM, and you can understand why I'm giving yeah. a shout out specifically to his Ginger GM course. Yeah. Danny, what, what, anything else you'd like to talk about you've done in the books that you're saying, any that you'd recommend to people out there? Well, no, just to say with that course, I struggled to film, but now I've got the webcam. Um, I should be able to film the uh, preview to that. So it should be on Chessable quite soon as well. Oh, really? Okay. As well as uh, it's on the Ginger GM website, but uh, it is a very good course. Uh, That's an excellent course. I really mean that, Daddy. I learned so much. I really did. I'm, I mean that. I, w yeah. would, I would not sit here and endorse something which I, A, haven't watched myself and B, didn't enjoy because yeah, I'm just you. undermining thank my you. own, you know, credibility if I'm but starting I, to say I know, things I know like that. you said 
that was part of the reason why Chesterfield wanted to pick it up was because you know they heard that you were saying good things about it. But uh, I'm Danny, that's the only reason they picked it up, frankly, isn't it? Because like <laughs> I'm the only one they listen to, frankly. Even though you know I need a bigger platform, you know. But I think also um, I'm working on a book at the moment. Uh, the problem with chess books now, to be honest with you, like they don't sell very well. Yeah, they're quite a lot of work because of the digital media, etc. Yeah, and and this is why a lot of people go to Chessable because uh, well, Chessable pay better royalties. They pay like forty percent, whereas with with, with chess books, you basically get your free grand flat fee, and, and you're lucky to get more. Really. Lucky to get more. Um, Anyway, look, Danny, thank you very much for joining me. I will finish in, in, in a, a rare moment for me. You'll be shot based in silence. I'm just going to like put the moves on the board to finish off like that. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today. If you want to come back, thank it's four, It's five o'clock Brit, uh, British time, four o'clock GMT. I will be joined by a different guest. I'd love it if it were Danny again, but we do want a little bit of, no disrespect, Danny, just a little bit of variety. Will you be any chance you might join me later in the week? I'd love it. Oh, I'd definitely like to do one, at least one more. Like, but Danny, I'll be in touch and I'd love well, you to join. I'd love to. Right? Of course, I understand. We didn't even have a chance. We were so excited by the game. We didn't even have a chance to, to, to for you to live up to your absolutely reputation as the golf guru. Well, as far as, I mean, there's the Masters coming up. I'll be honest with you, like, um, I think the favourites are probably going to do. I mean, uh, yeah, it's hard. I think Rory McIlroy could, could well complete the Grand Slam, yeah. Which, which the career grand slam we're having that we're having our messy won the world cup simon played the, the, the best game of chess yeah, yeah. Having that ever game. ever let's stop let's so not put our good, punches good people are succeeding yeah yeah i think I, also john ram i'd like john ram and patrick cantley so i'm kind of as a surprise i'm going for the favorites so danny thank you very much thank you very much joining me. i'm going to go a well-deserved break i'm going to just finish off danny thank you i'm going to just end the stream in right. silence literally play out the moves Yes. Boom. I lied. This is where it ended with resignation because Rook takes F8, Bishop G6, Rook F7, Bishop F7, check and mate. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, everyone. Hopefully, catch you all later. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.